everyone. How y'all doing this evening? Hope y'all had a good Friday night and looking forward to your weekend. I actually took the day off and had so many errands and chores I wanted to do, but uh, basically I just stayed in bed all day long. I mean, I literally slept all day. I was just beat down, tired, cranky, and needed the rest. Um, uh, feel a lot better now. Getting ready for a great football weekend and go back at it Monday morning. Um, um, just one thing I want to talk about tonight. Um, our country's in a state right now that we have two political parties and four political factions. You have the bright, or the um, all bright with Bannon section, and then you have the Trump section too. Uh, which I really don't know if those guys are too far apart. On a lot of the issues I really don't I think uh, Bannon got a lot of satisfaction out of uh, defeating Trump's man of course I'm not sure Trump was really for um, strange anyway because when you look at the two both of them line up side by side they're both characters or very controversial figures so I mean I don't really know if Albright's or the Albright movement's going after um, it's going after the Trump people and then on the Democratic side, you've but first let me say you've got the middle of the road, the moderate Republicans, your business Republicans, you know the guys who are, you know, kind of socially moderate and, uh, you know, just on the business index end of it. So you've got those two factions, the Republican Party, and you know, like I said, you got the uh, all right in the, in the Christian movement, and but <laughs> on the Democrat side, then you've got the moderates, you know, kind of like what Clinton was and you know Obama to an extent you know Obama really wasn't a liberal like everybody claimed him out to be he was modern on a lot of things so it was the first Clinton it's a lot easier to get elected in this in this country as a far right Republican than it is as a Democrat uh, we've seen that in election after election you know Nixon in 72 Reagan in 84 Bush in 88 you know so it's easier to get elected as far right as a far right candidate as far left so you got two rebellions that's taking place in both parties. So it's almost to the point that if those two factions could come together and start working on stuff, we could have a third party in this country that could really take over and get some things done. Now, is that possible? I mean, probably not. Probably the closest ever came to it was Ross Pro in 92. I mean, he had a big following. But um, as long as there's these four... Uh, sections segments you're never gonna get anything done because not only are they fighting with each other you've got the democrats fighting each other or the republicans fighting each other um and 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 just um nothing's gonna be done now i don't know if bannon's so mad at trump that he's put, forced him out they say bannon's looking at several uh several um candidates that he's gonna run in arizona mississippi oklahoma um, I think Colorado, um, I forgot what it was. Now, if he, if he wants to win those races and you sent six more Republicans up there like a Roy Moore, I mean, the Republicans would be in for some major headaches. I mean, they would have to make some major, major concessions to the Democrats. There's just no way, uh, they could get anything done. Not only got that, you got to throw in your moderate Republicans like a Susan Collins from Maine and, you know, our good old boy, the Maverick and John McCain, who deserves uh, all the respect and admiration that one could give him for being a war hero. The Republicans have really dug theirself in a mess. And um, they can sit there and they can blame Trump all they want to about this, but it wasn't their, um, it wasn't Trump's fault. I mean, Trump, Trump came in in a perfect storm. I mean, people were frustrated. They were losing their jobs. You know, um, Hillary ran an awful campaign. He came in with this message, hey, Washington's broke. It's not working for you. The Democrats are ignoring you. The Republicans are warring you, are, are, are not um, helping you. You know, um, 
nobody's out there nobody's listening to you i'm your voice of change i'm the only one that can do it and let's face it if you like him or love him whatever you think of him, the guy's a rock star i mean <laughs> look at his rallies you have twenty five thousand people out there with fifteen thousand waiting to get inside she'd have what twelve fifteen hundred and i mean and she had some heavy hard hitters out there with her i mean she had biden on the campaign trail she had the obamas she had her ex-husband I mean, uh, she, and it, it was basically Trump against the world. Um, you know, sorry, I didn't mean to go off topic with that, but the point I was trying to get about away to is the Republican Party's own fault. You know, if the Republicans that hate Trump and the Americans that hate Trump, you have to realize that these two parties are the one that created Trump or created a message for Trump to, to get like through to get through i mean this was a an election of anger this was a primal scream by the voters hey enough's enough and um you know if you're not going to fix it we're going to throw somebody up there that's going to blow the damn thing up and uh um you know um and and to sit back there and think you know it's funny i listen to everybody say he's going to lose in 2020 and I'm saying, well, the only way he won't be president again is if he don't run, because the Democrats have nobody that can beat him. I mean, she was the chosen one, and she couldn't beat him. And and the Democrats have nobody else to offer. I mean, Biden will be too old. He'll be 78. I don't know Trump will be 74. But still, I mean, he'll have the power of the incumbency. And, and he still has this loyal base. you got to remember during the race, you know, they talk about his approval ratings being, and I've seen them anywhere, um, you know, I'd be like, say they're around 33, 34%. The Rasmussen group actually has them around, I think, 40%, you know, to 45%. But, I mean, that really doesn't matter. I mean, throughout the race, Trump's approval ratings were in the mid-30s, high-30s, and he ended up winning the presidency. So, I mean, that, that doesn't really concern me. But, I mean, I guess I'm um, sorry I got a little off topic of it. I mean, I wanted to point out how, you know, Trump is a creation of the party system you know you finally had scott bear who's not a politician who's speaking a message a lot of people wanted to hear that the democrats and republicans just have ignored for the last you know 35 years and they've taken it for granted um and uh it's coming back to bite them and this populist movement that started with trump has now spilled over into roy moore a senate seat down here uh, Coker's already said he's not running in Tennessee. I mean, that would be a prime spot right there. I mean, to get another one of those, you know, popular seats there in the South, you got one in Mississippi and you get seven, eight, ten senators like that with a voting block of, you know, a Susan Collins, a McCain, who's not going to go along with Republicans. They can find themselves in a headache. Um, so the best thing for Trump to do is, it would really help him with independence and moderates if he just the trump trump has no loyal to anybody i mean trump said he had probably lined up with the democrats more than he did the republicans and that's probably true i mean you know i know trump did some stuff on gay rights but i mean that's just throwing some bones to his base you know i mean I, trump i don't think really cares less one way or another um but anyway i mean i think trump if he came out there and, like I said, he has no loyalty to the Republican Party, if he started working with the Democrats and got those moderate senators over there, he'd get a whole lot of legislation passed. And he says he uh, knows how to do the art of the deal. Um, we'll see how he is you know, working with them. He's already did a few things for them that the Republicans got mad. He allowed um, Medicare to start... Um, working with uh, prescription drug companies in Canada to lower, to lower our Medicare drugs. Republicans were dead set against that. Um, there's a few more I could name out, um, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. Um, you know, I don't know if any of y'all have you seen his tax plan. You know, he's been hit by it's a huge tax for the wealthy. No, it's not. I mean, if you're single, your personalized deduction is going to double. If you're married, it's going to double. Uh, he's offering a larger tax cr credit for um, the thing where a woman gets to stay home with her kid a few weeks after the, I forgot what the name of it was, but you know, when a woman gets some time off work, he's offering a $500 tax credit for somebody that's helping take care of an elderly parent. Um, 
<laughs> some, I mean, those are some pretty big tax cuts right there. Uh, or people want to hammer him because he's wanting to lower the um, corporate. Oh, and also, I want to say he put it into three different. Before I go into that, put it in three different tax brackets: a thirty-five percent, a twenty-five percent, a twelve percent, and there would even be a higher tax or taxes on the extreme wealthy. I mean, so he's including himself in this, and and he's also closing down loopholes. You know, to make it easier to take tax breaks. So I mean, um, um, I mean, you know, this is a, a billionaire who's doing this. I mean, uh, uh, it seemed like a much simpler code to me. Um, um, I, I mentioned um, the tax breaks he was given to the um, elderly. Oh yeah, but I want to go back to the other one. He's also wanting to lo do a corporate tax break where you go from. 25 percent he's wanted to be fifth or excuse me 35 percent he's wanted to be 15 i think they're going to settle at 20 but still it's a huge one and people are just up in arms over the corporate tax cut hey you got to look at something if you're a corporation over here and you're getting hit with a 35 percent tax for every dollar that you make 35 percent that you lose you wonder why they're sending these manufacturing these plants down to mexico when they don't have that 35 percent tax and they can go in there and pay their worker a dollar an hour with no benefits while they're paying them $18, $19 an hour over here for benefits and paying 35% taxes. That's why we've lost these companies over the last, um, uh, since NAFTA, which was the worst uh, trade agreement we've ever got into. And um, thank you for uh, getting us out of the TPP. Um, you know, because, uh, you know, that was horrible too. So, I mean, it, and it looks like there's going to be some, you know, Democratic support on that. But anyway, I got, I got totally off topic there, guys. And I wanted to go back to what the original topic was. Well, I mean, that got kind of touched up, but I wanted to go off and close out with original things. Um, we're in four different political factions in this country. And you've got the far right, you've got the far left, and you've got the centrist in both the Democrats and Republican parties together. If those guys came together and started working together, you could either get a lot done or you could have a third political party system that could take over and dominate this country. Um, just some uh, food for thought. Um, and, and other guys would still be in it too. You, you know, they would just, uh, you know, instead of having, you know, 252 Republican seats in the Senate, you know, this far right group may only have 31 senates and the far left may only have 42 senates, 42 uh, senators or, you know, something, or excuse me, 13 senators, 14 senators, you know, so you make it do a thing, you know, we could definitely get a lot more hammered out because, you know, you get a couple of their votes with you. But anyway, it's just a part of the political system. But sorry for rambling a little bit. I tend to do that some when I'm watching. But um, like I said, I think the best thing to do, if those two groups get together and work for Trump, you could get a lot of stuff done in the next few years and really um, get some stuff passed. And who knows, I mean, the two could break off and form their own political party. Uh, you know, other countries, uh, many nations have political parties. They have a bunch of political parties. You're talking about 10, 12, 15 people, you know, or parties, you know, with, you know, majority and dominant, you know, and these smaller parties that you got to work with together. So I think, I think it would be the, um, our political system that would be a lot more interesting if we broke into a, to, to a, multi-party system and we have had more multi-party races in this country before um i guess the first one would probably be 1824 um i guess the next one would be 1860 you had four different um you had four different people running in 1824 you had four different running in 1860 you had like uh a third party i can a few times the Whig the uh, Anti-Mason party ran a few times. I want to say, uh, seems like there's another third party somewhere. Um, I know in 1912, Roosevelt challenged, um, I can't even think of his name. It was his vice president. Um, sure on the tip of my tongue. It was Roosevelt Wilson and, uh, Howard Taft. Yeah. And Roosevelt challenged him to get the nomination. He ran, uh, I think Strom Thurmond ran in 1648, Wallace in 68, Pro in 92, and Pro really had a, a really good chance of doing it. I mean, he got 19% of the vote, and if it had stayed in and stayed with this thing, we could have legitimately had a third party, third party candidate, the Reform Party. 
But I think that would be more healthy to our country if we had a third party up there, a legitimate third party that could tell the far left and the far right, no, this is how we need to go to make things better in this country. Um, anyway, um, just uh, my political thoughts for the night. I uh, hope you guys, you and guys enjoy, you guys enjoyed it. Um, get ready for some good football Saturday. Roll Tide, and uh, I'll see y'all soon.